Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is gonna be a um, quick video to introduce our first project, which is the differential expression analysis project. And yeah, it's gonna be like a, a, a pretty quick video just to um, start talking about it and uh, set things up for what we're gonna do in the, in the next couple uh, videos. So in this project, we're gonna be analyzing a real data set related to a disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and you guys might be thinking this sounds like a, a pretty complicated medical term, but if we break down what each part of this means, it actually um, becomes pretty simple. So idiopathic uh, just means no known cause, pulmonary means lungs, and fibrosis means scarring. So this is a disease um, of scarring of the lung tissue with no known cause. And I have a little uh, diagram over here showing um, on the top, someone with normal lungs, and on the bottom, someone with this um, IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, disease, and how uh, their, their lung tissue looks uh, different. And yeah, I have a little bit of extra information for you guys. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a um, disease with no known cause that involves scarring of the lung tissue. It causes a loss of alveolar function. Median post-diagnosis survival is only two and a half to three and a half years. Um, and the five year survival rate is only 20 to 40%. So it's um, obviously a, a pretty serious disease uh, with not a very good prognosis, um, unfortunately. And there's no cure, but treatments can slow damage and prolong life. So early detection of the disease is helpful for uh, the patients. And yeah, so for our first project, we're gonna be downloading this um, real data set. Yeah, this is this is publicly available online. And in a couple of videos from now, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually download it so we can um, practice with analyzing a real life uh, data set um, from a real study. And yeah, so I have just down here in the bottom um, the uh, the actual paper that this data set is from. Um, and I'll, I'll also put a link in the description um, if you guys want to uh, check out this paper yourself and maybe try reading it. Um, yeah, it's a good practice to um, try to read the papers uh, if you're using it, if you're using a data set, try to like read the paper that's associated with it so that you can um, really understand the data set and know uh, like where the data is actually coming from. So in this case, like the, the paper is actually mostly about a different disease, chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And the data set also includes samples with this disease, but we're actually going to be filtering them out. So we're going to be interested in the um, in the uh, control samples and the um, IPF samples. But yeah, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. So just to tell you guys the very basics, um, the data set is gonna be a bulk RNA-seq data set. Um, so hopefully you guys remember what that is um, from the, uh, the previous videos, bulk RNA-seq. Um, again, basically quantifying the messenger RNA content of um, the samples. Um, and it's gonna be of uh, human lung tissue samples. And it's gonna quantify the mRNA content for um, 18,838 genes. Um, so basically, yeah, quantifying the um, mRNA content in these samples for uh, 18,000 or so genes. And there's gonna be 103 samples from um, both the IPF and the control conditions. Uh, so the 103 IP IPF samples include 36 that are from surgical biopsies, uh, which means basically patients that had um, lung biopsies um, that were confirmed to be this IPF disease. Um, it's basically biopsies of living patients. And then um, 67 samples from lungs of IPF patients that were removed during a transplant surgery. So basically the patient was getting a lung transplant and the 67 samples are from the um, old set of lungs that had the disease that were being uh, taken out and replaced with the uh, transplant lungs. And then the 103 um, non-IPF controls uh, so 41 of these samples were from uh, histologically normal parts of lung cancer biopsies. So basically biopsies of people who, who basically um, were, getting, were getting a uh, lung biopsy to see if they had lung cancer. 
um, but these, these control samples are taken from the normal non-cancerous parts of those biopsies. So basically taking a, a biopsy of someone to see if they had lung cancer, but then um, taking a, a normal part of that um, lung tissue sample and using that normal part, the non-diseased part, as a, uh, as a uh, control basically. And then 62 were from uh, deceased organ donors um, without lung disease. So the way, the way they actually described this in the paper was a little bit funny. They, um, they said these samples were from um, like healthy organ donors. And I just thought, yeah, that's, that's funny because uh, they're, not, they're not really healthy. <laughs> they're actually dead. So they're, they're not really healthy. But, um, but yeah, at least in terms of not having lung disease, it, it, it is still a healthy tissue sample in that sense of not having um, any lung disease, even though it, it is actually from a dead person who was a uh, organ donor. And they mentioned in the paper too, that the cohorts for these two conditions were frequency matched for age, sex, and race. So basically um, they tried to make it so that they, uh, the IPF and control um, groups had uh, similar similar um, demographics, basically, in terms of age, sex, and race, so that we um, hopefully can compare the groups without needing to worry too much about, um, like, confounding uh, factors and these, like, other uh, covariates. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's just, like, a quick summary, but again, I, I invite you guys to actually check out this paper and try to read it yourself, just as a, um, just, just as a good, uh, like, practice. And yeah, so this is basically what the data set format is going to look like. Um, it's, uh, again, this is, this is similar to what we already looked at, uh, in, in the previous video, how, um, this is like the, the standard format of a, uh, transcriptomic data set. So we have, um, a bunch of genes and, and really a row for each gene and then a column for each sample, um, where we also have different, uh, categories of samples based on condition. So we have our IPF samples and our control samples. And then in this spreadsheet, um, every element in this spreadsheet tells us for that sample, um, basically how much mRNA content was found corresponding to uh, like each particular gene. Um, and again, this is not exactly measuring the literal counts of mRNA strands. It's actually, if you want to be super like technically correct about it, it's actually measuring um, fragments of cDNA that was um, created from the mRNA content of the sample and how, how many of those fragments um, correspond to each gene. So if you want to be like super technically correct about it, um, that's how you would say it in like a technically correct sense. But if we just want to like explain it to ourselves in a way that makes sense and we understand what we're talking about, yeah, we can just talk about these numbers as quantifying um, how much mRNA content was found um, for each gene in each sample, which again is a measure of what we're calling gene expression. This is um, telling us how much each gene was expressed in each sample, where a higher number means higher expression um, and more mRNA content for that gene, and a lower number means um, lower expression and less mRNA content for that gene in that sample. And the goal of our first project, the goal of this analysis we're going to do is going to be to look for genes with differences in expression between the two conditions. And this is called um, differential expression analysis. Yeah, that's like the, the name of this first type of analysis we're going to be um, trying to do for our, our, our uh, first project, differential expression analysis. We're looking for genes that are differentially expressed between the two conditions. Um, okay, so that's all I have for this video. Um, yeah, the next couple of videos, we're going to start actually um, getting into this project and, um, and yeah, like uh, downloading this data set and um, doing this analysis. So thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.